Wow, that's pretty good. It's 0.151 nanofarads. All right, so I think for one final test of this flux capacitor, we put 2.1 gigawatts of power through it. All right, so I can assume that many people watching this video have seen Back to the Future. Inside this movie, a scientist named Doc Brown is able to invent this thing called a flux capacitor. And the flux capacitor is a fictional device that actually allows somebody to time travel in a car or the DeLorean. Which is a pretty cool feat. But sadly, flux capacitor is not real. So in the movie, the flux capacitor is something that looks kind of like a triangular xenon tube. You've got three different sections in sort of a Y shape, and these sections all go to different wires that are capped off. Now, I'm not sure exactly what the physics of this flux capacitor is, but it obviously isn't real and it doesn't work, uh, especially because of the physics of how a capacitor works. Now, flux capacitor looks more like a xenon tube with some high voltage running through it like this. But alas, the flux capacitor is not real yet, and it can't really time travel you back in time. In fact, this flux capacitor doesn't even look or work like a real capacitor. A real capacitor, as you will learn in my previous video, the link is in the description, is basically a device with two parallel plates, and these parallel plates have something inside called a dielectric, and that dielectric is an electrical insulator. And based on the surface area of these capacitors and the distance between them, you can change the capacitance between it. Now, this Y shape with wires coming out of each end looks nothing like a traditional capacitor. You've got tiny little plates on each end separated by a huge area. And this area looks like it could even be filled with a vacuum, which has a dielectric constant of one or something. So this flux capacitor could almost never function as a capacitor. Besides, why does it even have three legs? Well, anyway, we're going to try and make a capacitor out of soldering flux. So this isn't a flux capacitor like you think, but it technically is a flux capacitor because it's a real capacitor made out of real flux. So to start off building this flux capacitor, I'm going to take a little bit of this silver duct tape. This is literal duct tape. It's actually meant to fix the air ducts. This is more of duct tape than that duct tape you see at the store that says duct tape on it. I'm going to put a little bit down on this piece of paper right here. Just a little bit. And I'm just going to fold it over the outside. And then we're going to get another piece of paper or another piece of sticky note and make exactly the same thing. After you have your two plates finished, you can attach some wires to the top part of the aluminum foil sticking from each plate. And you can attach that to a little piece of speaker wire or whatever wire you see fit for this. And then now we have our two pieces of uh, foil tape taped to pieces of paper, and they have wire going to them. This is going to be our final capacitor, but wait, we need to add the dielectric. The dielectric of a material uh, is something that stores the electrostatic field between the two plates. So what we need to do is we need to put some flux on these pieces of foil before we're able to sandwich them together to form our capacitor. Right now, these two plates are short, but once we put the dielectric in between, then they will become a capacitor instead of a short. I will use a folded up sticky note dipped in this flux to apply the flux evenly to the surface. And it needs to be relatively thick. This is a soldering flux, and normally what this flux is used for is it's used for um, placing on surfaces that are to be soldered, so that way the solderer will easily bind to the surface. But in our case, we're using it as an insulating dielectric. Now, I think soldering flux is basically just like a mixture of oil and some other stuff. It's kind of like, I'm not exactly sure what's inside it, but it works for this purpose. So there you guys go. This uh, plate of our capacitor is covered in flux, and so now we can sandwich this top layer on top of the bottom layer and hope that none of these metal pieces touch. And once that's on there, we should have a working flux capacitor. Let's check this out on the multimeter. Now to run these tests on my multimeter, I'll first connect my multimeter to the flux capacitor via the wires that we connected to it. After the wires have been connected, um, we can 
test out the multimeter and see how well this thing performs. So as you can see, right now we have uh, no conductivity between the two plates and that's good because capacitors should not be conductive. Now let's press select and we'll see what the capacitance is. Wow, that's pretty good. It's 0.151 nanofarads. Now let's compare this to what happens when I remove the capacitor and it dips back down to 0 0.09 nanofarads. So this capacitor is actually functioning. It looks like, depending on the pressure applied to this flux capacitor, we can vary the capacitance from 1.7 nanofarads to like 24, 13, a whole bunch of different values of capacitance. And this is because as I press it, the two plates get closer together. We see that we're getting uh, quite a few fluctuations in capacitance. So this capacitor actually did perform pretty well for being made of some foil tape and some soldering flux. As you can see, I think what happened when the capacitor jumped up to extremely high capacitances and then stopped was when I pressed too hard on it and the plates almost touched and the internal resistance of this capacitor went down far enough to mess up the multimeter's readings. But I think that this capacitor uh, stayed pretty well at maybe 0.1 nanofarads. All right, so I think for one final test of this flux capacitor, we put 2.1 gigawatts of power through it. So we're gonna take some uranium, we're gonna put it into the nuclear reactor, and we're gonna fire it up, see what 2.1 gigawatts of power does to this flux capacitor. Can the flux capacitor handle the power? All right, we've got the capacitor hooked up to the nuclear reactor. Now let's fire this up, see if we can get 2.1 gigawatts of power. Let's crank this thing up. Interesting. Uh-oh. <coughs> Fire hazard. Not good. Well, Looks like we're no longer going to go back to that future. We're stuck here in 1950. And it looks like our flux capacitor is beyond repair. Seems like it has caught fire. Not the best thing in the world. Looks like we're not going back to the future anymore, Marty. All right, it looks as if our flux capacitor was a success. It was, we were actually able to build a real capacitor out of real soldering flux. And this capacitor was actually able to uh, hold capacitance. It was actually able to hold uh, an electrostatic field inside it of about 0.15 nanofarads, but that was able to switch depending on how much pressure was applied to the flux capacitor. This is actually kind of cool because it could almost be used as a pressure sensor. As always, thank you for watching and stay tuned for my next video.